Okay. 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 So welcome everyone to another book reading for the Kla Mothers. This moon we welcome looks for women and yeah she's the fourth clan mother and as it says here in front of this in front of the clan mother book there's always this little uh, little write-up of each of the clan mothers looks for women is the seer and the oracle and the dreamer and the prophet she is the keeper of the golden door at the crack in the universe, the mother of visions and dreams and psychic impression, the guardian of the dream time and the keeper of inner potential. She teaches us how to understand our visions, dreams, feelings and impressions, how to enter dream time, go into other realms and through the crack in the universe. How to properly use our psychic abilities and gifts of prophecy for humanity. How to use spiritual boundaries, psychic self-defense, and respect those boundaries and others. How to use your inner potential to become healed healers. How to see the truth. Looks for women. Mother, teach me how to see the shining light of stars, the faces of the ancestors in worlds both near and far. The faces of the ancestors in worlds both near and far. Show me how to welcome the visions appearing to me, seeing the truth in detail, unraveling each mystery. Walk me through the dream time of altered time and space, that I may share these visions with every creed and race. Doorkeeper of all dimensions, I seek your medicine ways of how to earth my visions and seeing the truth inside of me today. The Clan Mother of the Fourth Moon Cycle Looks for women is the clan mother who is the guardian of the fourth moon cycle, which falls in April. The full spectrum of pastel colors is connected to this clan mother's cycle because she carries the medicine of prophecy, seeing the truth in all colors. She is the doorkeeper of the crack in the universe and the golden door of illumination that leads to all other dimensions of awareness. She stands at the crack in the universe and safely guides us as all human spirits, taking dream time journeys into the other realms and then back home again, being present and fully conscious of their bodies. This clan mother is a seer and an oracle, a dreamer and a visionary. She teaches us the validity of our impressions, dreams and visions and feelings as they exist within our inner potential. Looks for women instructs humankind and in how to unravel the symbols found in psychic impressions. She shows us how to see the truth in every vision we receive in the tangible and intangible worlds. In her wisdom, looks for women assists every seeker in finding the seeds of personal and planetary prophecy that the great mystery planted inside all human beings. She knows that all two legates can access the ability to see the truth in all dimensions if they seek the light of the eternal flame of love and if they are willing to receive the visions that come when the heart is open. Looks for women understands that all possibilities and probabilities exist in the future. She teaches us that tangible events are only manifested through each individual's freely made decisions. Every human being has the ability to use the information found in sleep time dreams or dream time waking visions to change the course of 
her or his personal experience. The spa woman sees all potential truths, as well as how an individual will ignore or take heed when omens or potents appear. Nuxpa woman is willing to teach humankind how to see those truths by using their own abilities, but she will not give pat answers on what the future holds for any individual. Nuxpa woman shows us how to observe everything around us and how to remember every detail. This clown mother enjoys teaching us how to recall anything we have seen in order to reconstruct useful information. Nuxpa woman instructs us how to distinguish between the tangible and intangible parts of what we see when we have developed second sight or the ability to see in both worlds at once. When we find you in this talent of second sight, she teaches us how to know which vision is true prophecy and which vision is just a probability. In the final development of the climb of this lesson, human beings are able to fully understand any signs, portents, omens or symbols presented to their awareness. Luxfa Women presents the lesson of respecting boundaries by showing us that it is not okay to look into another's sacred space unless we are asked by that individual to do so. She shows us the pitfalls of looking too far too soon by reminding us that we can destroy the beauty of the moment. When we forget our ability to use free will by forecasting what a future outcome will be, we can trap ourselves into projection, expectations and the loss of potential opportunity. The lessons we refuse to experience will usually catch up with us later in another form. Looks Far Woman shows us how to observe each opportunity knowing when to follow the path and when to choose another road. Our personal clarity depends upon our ability to observe the obvious, allowing us then to make personal choices in order to alter our sacred path and grow. This clamor that tells us how to see the truth in all life's situations. Doorkeeper of the crack in the universe. Luxfar women sat in the darkness of the cave, gazing into the inky water of her blackened medicine bowl. The firelight flickered, sending waves of light across the water's surface. She felt herself being drawn into her own reflection as her eyes mirrored bottomless wells and the water seemed to part, reve revealing another level of unfathomable space. Stars appeared in the indigo vastness that emerged from the silent water, allowing her to send her spirit travelling into the uni universe that was appearing before her eyes. She sailed inside her orenda, cloaked in the spiritual essence, moving into the world within worlds, being opened for her to view. The passing of planets and stars and comets, swirling energy, and other heavenly bodies made her feel at one with creation. She could see the movement of the great mystery's breath as new worlds were exalted, as new word, the worlds were exhaled into the void of deep space. She traveled on, taking in every marvel of the starry medicine bowl of the night sky. She passed millions of garden fires nestled together, forming the arch across the sky nation. She watched the spirit's form of the ancestors, holding counsel around the campfires of stars. She watched as the sky saluted her passing by, raising their hands in greeting. Some spirit warriors rode of her on their ghostly white horses as far as the next camp. Others followed, running on the wind. Looks for women absorbed every new vista that crossed her line of vision. The light of a thousand suns lit, her surf lit the surface of passing planets. Radiant colors and hues bounced back from the pan planetary bodies, creating a feast for her eyes. In the far distance, the clam mother could see what appeared to be a lightning storm. Fire sticks crashed upon one another, battling in a mulberry-colored void, drawing her ever closer to the erratic, silent explosion of zigzag dancing forms. 
In the middle of the circle of fire dancers, she saw an emerging vision, the appearance of a crack, motionless amid the dancing lightning bolts, brought her focus to the center of the raw creative force displaying their dance before her. She heard the voice of the Earth Mother. Look far, you are seeing the sacred fire of creation. Trust, follow the flow, see and know. The crack in the universe holds the golden door of illumination that leads to all other levels of awareness. You have traveled into the vastness of the worlds within your own spiritual essence, your orenda. The worlds within worlds that comprise the sacred space of your own being are awaiting your discovery. You will be the door keep the, you will be the keeper of the door that leads through the crack in the universe of opposites. Through exploring the orenda, each member of the human tribe will discover and reclaim their ability to see the truth of oneness. The voice faded and Luxfar woman journeyed further into the crackling, explosive dance of the sacred fire before her. She felt no burns as her spirit form moved through the fiery lights, reaching the timeless abyss inside the crack in the universe. The emerging form of the golden door reflected its blinding golden light, sending rays of light through her spirit form, lightning, lighting the darkness of the deepest parts of the cracks in her chasm. She waited as the golden door moved forward, coming to rest in front of her. The voice of the Earth, Mother's, of the Earth Mother gently spoke to her heart. Daughter of my spirit, here you will stand for all time, showing others how to see the truth within, the, within themselves and within all things. To grow beyond human limitation, all children of Earth must face their limitations and hesitations. They will come to you. Just waiting for Silka. Okay. The voice faded and looks for women journeyed further into the crackling, explosive dance of the sacred fire before her. She felt no burns as her spirit moved through the fiery, fiery lights, reaching the timeless abyss inside the crack in the universe. The emerging form of the golden door reflected its blinding golden light, sending rays of light through her spirit form, lightening the darkness of the deepest part of the cracks in the chasm. She waited as the golden door moved forward, coming to rest in front of her. The voice of the Earth Mother gently spoke to her heart. Daughter of my spirit, here you will stand for all time, showing others how to see the truth of inside themselves and within all things. To grow beyond human limitation, all children of Earth must face their limitations and hesitations. They will come to you and see the truth within themselves through the limitless eyes, through your limitless eyes. If they are willing to give away their illusion, illusions, they will pass through the golden door into their next level of understanding. If they fear their own potential, they will return to the place within themselves that gives them comfort until they are ready to grow. The art of seeing the total truth of the vastness of the Orenda and seeing the truth of all the worlds that exist within the creative force of the spiritual essence can be overwhelming. Many cycles of the wheel of life are required before that level of seeing the truth is attained. Many will come, many will turn back, many will falter and then move through the golden door. But you must hold the door open for all who have the courage to see. Luxfa woman understood the words spoken by the Earth Mother and cherished the role she was given. The blinding light of total truth illuminated every part of her spiritual essence as she moved through the golden door, seeing all the potentials in creation, allowing it to be. 
undeniably written in her heart. When the Clan Mother returned her consciousness to her body, the timelessness of her journey ended. Hundreds of moon cycles had passed during Luxfar Woman's final rite of passage, discovering the truth inside the worlds of in worlds. The water in the medicine bowl had evaporated. The ashes of her fire had returned to the earth of the cave's floor. The dripping of lime water had grown new rock formations, but her ever young body was the same. She had returned from the crack in the universe, ready to serve her human children by teaching them how to see the truth. Luke's far woman realized that her ability to see the truth would need to be honored in, into tiny glimpses to match the capacities of her individual human children. She was grateful that she had learned how to see the truth through the eyes of others. This talent of seeing through another's eyes gave her the ability to duplicate each individual's level of seeing through of seeing truth without overwhelming her or him. She had learned how to show her human children the illusions present in their path, gently leading them through earth for every cycle of growth and change. Luxpa women understood the value of never missing a step on the great medicine wheel of life. Some would try to move too fast and burn up their human bodies. Others would allow fear to keep them from the natural progress. But Luxfar women saw the truth in compassion and was willing to nurture every two-legged through the process of spiritual evolution. The great mystery was not to be solved, and that same mystery existed in every part of creation, allowing the beauty of each life form to manifest in its own time. Luxfar women intended to help others observe the obvious lesson found in the natural world and apply those truths to themselves. The creatures could show the two leggeds how to use the, their physical bodies and potential traits to survive and learn and earn longevity. Then it would be possible to show the two leggeds how to master the life force in their bodies by showing them the truth of discovering the creative forces of natural elements that made up their human forms. Through seeing these truths, humankind could then grasp the expansive picture presented by their spirits. They would come to understand that all things, including themselves, contain living spiritual forms. After the lessons of life force was learned, the human tribe would learn to enter the stillness in order to discover the secrets of the spirit and the potential found in exploring the non-tangible worlds. Every lesson of the realms of spirit could be accessed through nature. The spirit of every life form in the natural world were ready and willing to become teachers for the two legates who sought their guidance. This world of truth represented in every circle of relation would lead to new medicine wheels of experience in the world within worlds. Luxfar women could see the patterns of spiritual evolution as they spiraled out before her, creating probable futures of the human tribe. It made her heart glad to see, to feel how her role in the earth tribe's evolution could assist the growth potential of her human children and all life forms. Seeing the truth was an ever-evolving talent that brought further understanding of the great mystery and how all things were constantly growing and changing inside the original source. Luxfar woman passed many winters, discovering the miracle of life on, on the mother planet. She showed her human children how to observe the changes in the weather, how to divine through the natural elements, how to read the faces of the cloud people and how to understand the messages that were presented in their lives. She taught her human children how to read the gifts of life force found in every part of nature as sign points to guide them on their individual sacred paths. Learning how to see was not an easy task for some humans. Those stubborn two-leggeds insisted that if they could see the whole truth in a glance, the truth was not there. Luxfar woman was not concerned that some humans were willing to look and others were not. 
Fear of the unknown troubled the human tribe because they had not developed the ability of seeing the truth in all lessons. In her deep compassion, Luke's forewoman nurtured the fearful and gently guided them through a multitude of healing, through a multitude of healing steps that allowed them to release their fears by only looking as far as they were ready to see. One son, while Luke's forewoman was spending some time in solitude, a young boy came stumbling up the rugged path that led from the hot springs to her cave carrying his sister bruised limp body in his weary arms he explained that his sister had been raped and beaten and left by the traveling hunters he laid the girl's body at luke's forewoman's feet he wanted to know if his little sister would ever return from eternal land her unseeing eyes were wide open and the grimace of terror still locked her jaw as if she had been frozen in time this girl had passed 14 winters, but it was doubtful that she would last another son. She had not spoken, eaten, taken a drink or moved since he had found her. He had travelled for three sons and sleeps, bringing the girl to Luke's far woman, who was his last hope. Luke's far woman hid her feelings as she examined the girl. The clamour looked past her own feelings of anger and heartbreak to see if the girl's spirit had been broken forever. The light of the eternal flame was weak inside the child's arenda, but it flickered and sputtered each time the boys spoke to her. Luke's far woman worked to keep the girl, who was named Starfire, from losing touch with life. She was afraid that Starfire's spirit would slip through the crack in the universe and she would forget who she was, wandering into the eternal land without a hope of ever returning. Sapphire's brother, Little Eagle, followed the clan mother's instructions. He gathered the, cup, the cupped lava rocks that served as lamps, filled each with dried grass dipped in melted pine sap, and then placed the bowls around the edge of the hot springs that bubbled at the rear of the caves that Luke's far woman called her home. Little Eagle worked quickly, starting a fire and lighting the lamps. Together they lifted Starfire into the warm water, supporting her body so that it would float in their arms. Luke's far woman sang through Starfire's spirit, the girl's body being relieved of any stress while it floated in the warm mineral waters that stimulated the safety of the womb. Although Luke's far woman was presented, was present and aware of what she was singing, the child in her arms and the presence of Little Eagle, she was also aware of the part of herself that was standing at the crack in the universe, making sure that Starfire's spirit did not wander away. At times like this, the seer was grateful that she could easily master seeing the many levels of awareness in the tangible and intangible worlds simultaneously. Many, moon pa many moons passed while Little Eagle and Luke's far woman worked with Starfire, slowly bringing the girl's spirit back from the edge of the eternal land. The clan mother insisted that Little Eagle stay by his sister's side during the healing process because his voice offered Starfire a way to grasp, to grasp something familiar, giving her a pathway through the void that was created by the violation. The brutality of Starfire's trauma had shattered her sense of being, tearing a hole in her sacred space, allowing fragments of her spirits to explode, abandoning the girl's senses inside the vastness of the void. In the darkness, without her spiritual essence intact, Starfire's connection to the tangible world, her recovering body and broken mind were minimal. Luke's far woman travelled into the void regularly, collecting shattered fragments of the Starfire's spirit. Every sun and sleep, the oracle guided the shards of the spirit back into the girl's arenda. Luke's far woman placed a medicine wheel of stone people and medicine bundles around Starfire's body to contain the portions of the child's spirit in a constructed sacred space until enough of the girl's essence was collected to bring her back from the void. Little Eagle and Luke's far woman waited and watched, spoke and sang to Starfire. 
Then they returned their thanks, sending love to the great mystery every time a tiny bit of progress was made. The sun finally dawned when Starfire's eyes lost their glazed stare and flickered with recognition when her big brother greeted her. She had been eating and drinking for some time, but had no awareness of herself or those who had attended to her needs. Luke's far woman realized that the healing process would continue for many moons, but the crisis of losing Starfire's spirit was now over. Slowly, Starfire began to trust Luke's far woman as the clan mother took the girl through a multitude of small healing steps on the path back to wholeness. Through learning to take care of her personal hygiene, feeding herself, taking, talking about her feelings, walking in nature and learning to feel safe, Starfire firmly rooted herself in the tangible world of family life. Laughter would come to the girl's lips when she shared in Little Eagle's antics, making fun of the standoff he had, he had seen in the glen between the bear and the honeybee. The passage of moons had worked its medicine, allowing Starfire to share in the happy routine of Luke's far woman's life. Little Eagle and Starfire, having lost their parents, stayed with Luke's far woman for many seasons. From time to time, other humans would seek the clan mother's wisdom, travelling for distance, far distances, to hear what Luke's far woman had to say. The day came when it was time for Little Eagle to move on, having found a mate among the band of visiting two-leggeds. Starfire was saddened by Little Eagle's departure, but she had adopted Luke's far woman as her mother, feeling that the caves and springs were now her home. Little Eagle and his mate promised that they would return to visit the two women who were part of their kin. Starfire, having no desire to live with her mate or have children, had decided to train with Luke's far woman in order to develop her natural abilities as a seer and a dreamer. Upon, Luke's far, uh, upon Little Eagle's departure, Starfire began her training in earnest. Luke's far woman tested her adopted daughter when they went on medicine walks, telling the girl to shut her eyes from time to time and to describe in detail everything she had seen during the preceding moments. When visitors came to the two women's fire, Starfire would be tested on the observation she had made during the visitor's stay. Through seeing the obvious truths in the tangible world and being able to recount every detail, Starfire honed her ability to see. After completing these lessons, the clan mother began instructing Starfire on how to use the blackened medicine bowl filled with water, gazing into the inky pool to see beyond the tangible. Luke's far woman understood the keen abilities that Starfire possessed. Every two-legged who had survived the shattering of the luminous egg that held their sacred points of view could access other realms because fragments of their spirit had journeyed into the void of creation. The process of becoming a seer or a dreamer would test Starfire's strength to confront and to go through the memories of trauma that would be encountered in the visions that appeared. The part of any abused human's healing process was, so de was a delicate one that could be very frightening, but Starfire was strong now. Many moons passed and the young woman challenged and, breast and bested the nightmares of the past, moving beyond the shadowy remnants of her former pain, clearing the feelings that could inhibit her ability to see clearly. Luke's far woman was proud of her adopted daughter's progress. The girl had passed 20 winters and was becoming a talented seer. Often when visitors would arrive asking for help in finding a lost child or for some clue to a mysterious illness, Luke's far woman would instruct Starfire to look for answers. The girl's clarity, clarity was a rare gift and reflected the caring Luke's far woman had taken in training the young seer. From time to time, Luke's far woman would recall the early lessons that had led her to become the doorkeeper of the crack in the universe. The Earth Mother had taught Luke's far woman to read the faces of the cloud people and see the source of all of an illness buried deep <clears throat> in a patient's body or mind. As a young dreamer, she had learned to travel 
and the wings of dragonfly, using dragonfly's medicine, breaking through the illusions of the tangible world to retrieve information. When Nuxpa woman had learned to use the blackened, and blackened medicine bowl, she had called upon Swan's medicine to surrender to the flow of the dream time, entering the parallel worlds of reality. Lizard's medicine of dreaming solutions and visions taught her the way to access the expansive dreams of worlds within worlds. She called upon the mole's medicine of seeing in the dark and being able to travel under the earth when she was looking for items that have been buried. When Luxpa woman fouled the presence of evil, she called on the medicine of Flicker the woodpecker. Flicker carried the strongest protection against the shadow and evil. The young oracle would allow her spirit to ride the back of Panther when she sought the truth of future events, because Panther carried the medicine of leaping fearlessly into the void of the unknown. Panther's yellow eyes saw with clarity, being the colour of Grandfather Sun, even in the nothingness of empty space. These spirit totems were Luke's far woman's teachers and allies in the natural world, assisting her in her continuing quest to see the truth in all realms. With Eagle's help, Starfire had retrieved the passion that illuminated her ability to see. Eagle's lofty ideals allowed the girl to know that she carried the ability to reclaim the wholeness she had once felt before her violation. Each time Starfire brought a part of herself home to her sacred space, Eagle gifted her with new spiritual clarity, bringing her to the place where Luxpa Woman could finally take her through the crack in the universe safely. Luxpa Woman entered the cave when the fading light of Grandfather Sun was painting the outside world in brilliant hues of vermilion. She looked at Starfire, tending a small twig fire and broke the silence. Daughter, the time has come for you to travel beyond the realms you have journeyed through. Go and purify yourself in the bubbling water of the hot springs. Then meet me in the cavern where we use the blackened medicine bowl to seek vision. Starfire nodded, and then unhurriedly made her way to the cave, out of the cave. Having total trust in her teacher and adopted mother, that instilled a sense of safety in the girl. Nuxfa woman marvelled as the young dreamer's balanced, balanced attitude of acceptance. Starfire had maintained her relationship to the Earth Fire and tangible to the Earth Mother and tangible reality, as well as her understanding of the intangible by using dolphin's medicine of how to use the breath in order to tap the available energy, life force or mana. Like Luxfa woman, the young oracle could journey beyond the physical realms and open and upon returning properly use the breath to bring her body functions into balance again. While Starfire prepared herself for the journey, Luxfa woman sat with her memories. The clan mother recalled every step of her own path that had honed the skills she now possessed. She reviewed the hours she had spent learning to focus her mind in one location so that she could propel her spirit to that place within the dream time. She looked at the lessons she had mastered by stilling her thoughts and following glimpses of vision until revealed whole pictures of the truth. She remembered her frustration and her triumphs along the, the odious path of becoming a see seer until she felt complete within her being. She would also achieve a wholeness in her own during Starfire's passage. Luxpa woman recalled the Earth Mother's words of encouragement when she had learned how to master the gifts she had been given. The Earth Mother had blessed Luxpa woman by passing her this medicine of seeing the truth. Now Luxpa woman was responsible for giving those same skills to the human tribe. If Starfire was successful and made it through the crack in the universe, Luxfar Woman's final rite of passage would be complete. The clan mother would know that she had impeccable, impeccably trained another woman who would then be responsible for passing the medicine to others. The caring patience and tender guidance Luxfar Woman had shown in helping Starfire develop her gift, 
important to develop her gifts would bring luster to the whole human tribe. Starfire's success would signal that Luxfar women's circle of experience was complete and that the seer and dreamer medicine would be available to humankind throughout time. Luxfar woman was ready to face the future, having reviewed the past and released it in order to see the truth of the here and now. She stood up and walked with silent determination to the place in the giant cavern where the next turn in the sacred path would be revealed. The two women sat in the vision cavern, peering into the blackened medicine bowl. The surface of the water was lit by the flame of their twig fire. Starfire would be journeying alone, but Luke's far woman would observe the girl's effort by using her talents as a seer. Starfire moulded her consciousness with the water and fire seen in the medicine bowl by focusing without blinking. Gently, she surrendered her mind to the flow of the life force of the elements of fire and water, using the fire to burn away her random thoughts and water to cleanse her tot total being of the need to control the journey. She continued by bringing the Earth Mother's magnetism from the soil beneath her into her body center of gravity, her womb. With this breath, with the breath, she brought the element of air into her lungs and used the life mana to stabilize her body's functions. Finally, she opened her heart and gave over, surrendering to the love of the great mystery. The connection was now complete. Combining the clan chiefs of air, earth, water and fire with the raw creative potential of the spiritual of the great mystery, Melding these natural forces with divine love inside the Orenda. Through limitless space, Starfire travelled on a beam of love, beholding the dreamscapes of earlier journeys as she crossed the vast expanse of the void. Much time passed as she sailed through the dream time, finally reaching unfamiliar territory. The bow of beauty stood before her, glittering in light of stars. The golden bow was inlaid with pearls representing pearls of wisdom and with rubies glistening in the reflection in the reflected golden light. And with the rubies Okay. The bow of beauty spoke to Starfire. Child of Luke's far woman, the arrow of your spirit form can be mounted upon my bowstring and shot into the void if you possess the faith reflected in the red of those precious stones inlaid in the arc of my bow. Like yourself, through living with the grit of human life, the oyster produces the pearls of wisdom that had brought you this far in your healing path. Are you ready to travel further? Sapphire agreed in a spirit form was shot by the bow of beauty into the void of the unknown. Blazing colours flew past her, blurring the dreamscape, as she travelled far and fast into the new realms of dream time. When her visions cleared, she saw the erratic dance of lightning bolts far in the distance. The silent storm of a raw creative force drew her forever forward, drifting easily, seemingly being pulled by her own fascination. Suddenly, as she drew very close to the fire of stick beings crackling silently before her, she spied an apricot light that reminded her of the rising of Grandfather Sun. The radiant apricot-coloured lightning lightened into the shades of buttercup and sunflower yellows, revealing a large chasm of, of a space seemingly split in the centre of the burnished golden orb. A figure appeared in front of the enormous crack in space, faintly outlined in purest gold. As the figure took on more substance, Starfire was drawn closer until she could see the face of the spirit form. The welcoming arms of Luke's far woman encircled the girl's spirit, spirit form as she felt all the love in the universe course through her being. Together they watched the golden door of illumination appear, rising from the crack in the universe. Luke's far woman stood aside and questioned her daughter with eyes filled with compassion. A blinding light appeared inside Starfire's spirit from the place where her heart resided in her human body. The eternal flame of love 
blazed with a passion for living inside the girl's dreaming body, signalling that she had forgiven those who had wounded her, and had seen the truth of how that pain had served her by opening her to the gifts she, she now held. She became the healed healer, who had passed through the dark night of the soul to reclaim the love. Her connection to the Creator and to all life was complete. Starfire nodded to her mother and allowed the light of love beaming from her heart to draw her through the crack in the universe. The visions that every human encounters on the other side of the golden door through the crack in the universe are the reflections of joy that exist beyond the illusions of physical sorrows. In that other world, we are shown how to use the energy that we once used to heal ourselves to experience the joy of human life. The worlds of in worlds are opened to every two-legged who chooses to travel beyond the pain that limits our abilities to see the truth. Luxfar women will always stand in the crack of the universe, holding the golden door of illumination open for those who have the ears to hear, the eyes to see, and the hearts to understand. Yeah, so that is our story for Looks Far Woman. And just honoring and remembering that their complete story of the Claw Mothers as being these 13 aspects that Earth Mother and Grandmother Moon birthed forward or created forward into these physical human woman bodies that lived at a specific time according to myth um, on earth and how the clan mothers come with that specific essence to understand it themselves and then pass on that essence to the human family yeah it was absolutely powerful and very very meaningful to me thank you Great pleasure. So Thank you. And Thank I'm going to show you what I did in the meantime. Wow, you really went for it. That's beautiful. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Get, yeah. Yes, exactly. I can see. I can see the looks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got such a little giggle when I, um, when there's that part where there's the observation of the nature and the closing of the eyes and then recalling and then remembering your butterfly uh, that you drew. Thank you, Shanti. Okay. Thank you. Very precious, very powerful. Thank you. Thank you. For being a conduit, a conduit between these stories and this time. Thank you. I love them. Thank you so much, Silko. Have a beautiful evening. Bye. You too. Bye.